Welcome back to another episode of Trading Secrets. Today we are joined by the real estate agent, entrepreneur, content creator, and working mom of two, Alex Hall. Many of you know Alex from her role on Netflix is Selling the OC, where she shares her personal and professional life working for the Oppenheim Group in Orange County. On the show, Alex's personable yet sometimes controversial character makes her one of the more polarizing members of the show throughout its three seasons. Being a native of Orange County, Alex leveraged her market knowledge to lead a successful real estate career before joining the Oppenheim Group in 2021. When she is not selling million-dollar listings, Alex creates hilarious content with her social media following about her life as a working mom. And today, we are going to discuss her life in the OC, the future of the real estate market, and where she sees selling the OC going in seasons to come. Alex, thank you so much for being on Trading Secrets. What an intro. I, I'll come on any day of the week. Let's go. We're, you're here. We're excited to have you. You got a wild resume from interior design to selling real estate to where you are today in 2024, three seasons later. And honestly, let's just, usually I go in chronological order, but let's just, let's skip to the chase. We were just in Patron together at the oh Stagecoach event. I mean, that was an absolute blast. What'd you make of that event? I like, like, honestly, life changing. I am a Patron ride or die, anything from here on out. They are such an amazing brand, but all, the, the real reason that I loved that experience wasn't because of how amazing they treated all of us, but it was because of the connections that they, they formed. Like between all of us in the house, we had a really dynamic group. And I feel like they really, really hand chose with intention who they were having at that in that home and at that event and just the connections i'm all about human connection and the experiences and that was i mean quite frankly i don't know how i'm going to top that i don't know how i'm going to top that trip it was incredible it's a good point like you think about all the personalities that were in this like i don't want to say small house but like in a tight living quarters right yeah like you know you got guys from the batch or joey and kelsey were there you and polly are there I mean, there was, there was a huge list of people that were there and a million things could have gone wrong and everything went perfect. And I think it is a testament to them because they just picked personalities that work. So I had such a blast. Is that like, would you say like influencer experiential trips? Is this something that is the norm to you? Is this a once in a while thing from like a, a business perspective? How often does stuff like that happen? Oh my gosh. I mean, here's what's funny is that these experiences and these offers and invitations when they first started coming in, like funneling in through like the emails um, and the DMs, I was so taken aback because it's so out of the norm of my regular lifestyle. Like I'm just a mom who sells houses, right? Yeah. And it was really, I was like, oh, this is a scam. Like invitation, <laughs> all, all expenses paid to Dubai, first class Emirates. What? Like this is a scam, right? Like those are the, the experiences and the offers that that we get as, you know, being in the public eye or as influencers and um, it's, it's almost jarring. And I, I think I've wrapped my head around it now where nothing is impossible and nothing is kind of off the table. So if I ever get a, an invitation that seems way too good to be true, I now remind myself, yeah, no, that's just your life now. <laughs> that's just yeah. where you're at. Truly. But, but what's, what's funny about the Dubai thing you said though, is when I got that invite, I, we did a whole episode on Dubai. We did a recap on Dubai. We, we actually met with the PR company and talked about the impressions that were made and understood the dollars and cents behind it all because they spent so much money on everyone being there. But when I got that invite, I was 100% guaranteed for sure that was a fraud trip. Like there's no way that invite, the way it came out. No way. Were you there? I was there. What? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, actually, hang on. Let's talk about this. I'll never forget because you, you're you in the weeds there. At, at that time, I had no drama in my life in any capacity. And I was on the roof of the Atlantis Royale. And I'm watching you and Tyler, who's been on the show, and you're looking at each other's phones and you're like, what the fuck? You could see you guys in pure panic. And I was like, I wonder what that's about. And I just let it go. And you know, months later, I learned that's because everyone was blowing you guys up for being on that trip. Were you there? Like, cause I got a plus one. So my brother yeah. came on the trip with me. 
Was he your plus one or were you like invited individually? This is a sensitive subject because my mom is here and she could, I don't want her to hear. I mean, this is a very, so my mother was originally supposed to be my plus one. Oh, I'm, your mom, I hate to say it, but it was the best trip ever. You, I brought my brother. You should have brought your mom. That trip, I honestly, I can't even explain. That was like the quickest trip that was probably the most, my, that my emotional roller coaster on that trip, I think, was one of the most crazy and hectic roller emotional roller coasters that I've ever been on. And I've been through a like I've led many lives. OK, I've done marriage. I've been on divorce. I've had kids. I've been separated. I've had boyfriends dating while single. Da- like I've done it all. Working mom. That was a, a gnarly emotional roller coaster on so many different levels like the 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 press and the media around like Tyler and Alex swift off to Dubai or when he announces his divorce I don't get stressed out about that kind of stuff like I'm in my own and it, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing or if it's a self-defense mechanism where I'm in my bubble and I'm like I know the truth like this is so stupid but Tyler was a, is a very ang- at least since I've no like gotten to know Tyler, right? And it's I obviously we got way closer like filming the show, which is already kind of a an anxiety ridden bubble in and of itself, right? So my experience with him was always, you know, he had a lot of anxiety um, with with how he was perceived in in the public eye, right? Uh, sure. Which is a very normal thing, right? Um, sure. And so obviously with wisdom and learning and growth and in hindsight, looking back on that experience with, with him in mind in particular, there was definitely some weird coincidences. Um, and a few people that are very, very close to me that aren't as naive as I am have pointed things out. And I'm like, no way. No. And they're like, yes, Alex, like, yes. Like the fact that like there's these conspiracy theories within the, the 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 group chat you know like that he yeah. announced his divorce on the same day that we were literally leaving for dubai it Texas. was because I, re- I i remember like when i saw him there i was and I, I i the first thing i thought about was like wait i know this guy how do i know this guy and i know obviously it's, i knew him as britney snows right before, uh, yeah I, yeah and I, I think it must have been like that day it was literally not Jason, not only that day, and I'm so naive, right? Yeah. And so I show up. So to, to answer your question, I brought a date. So I brought a plus one oh, for for one of the main reasons, not bringing my mom. Like my mom's ticket was booked. Like I added her in as my plus one, like the, the concierge. Everybody knew she had her ticket with her name on it. I had to then go in like less than a week before we left Yeah. and change it all because I was like, this is, I want it. For me, I was like, I want to go with a date. I want to go because I didn't know. So oddly enough, Tyler and I didn't even know that we were both going to Dubai until maybe two or three weeks before we left. And we were talking to production about our schedules. And I had put in an email or in the group chat like, hey, I'm not going to be available for these dates. Sure. Um, Because I'm going to be out of town. And then Tyler was like, wait, I'm also going to be out of town those dates. And... um. So he texted me or called me and he's like, what are you doing on those days? I was like, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but I got invited. He's like, holy shit, I'm going too. And so we found a lot of comfort in knowing that because then we were like, okay, we're not being sex trafficked or, you know, nothing weird is going to be going on. And it might sound weird because like, oh, we didn't know that each other were going, but it's a very delicate thing within like the group of people because we don't want to like boast or brag that we're getting maybe sure, sure certain things so it's yeah. not something where we're just sharing in the group chat with like all of our friends from the show like hey guess what i'm doing so sure. in that setting neither of us were disclosing it and then we found out short story long that we were both going we found obviously we both found comfort in that he was bringing his brother i was gonna be bring my mom changed it i brought a date which is hilarious because hey, this actually- is funny so you so he was there with his brother and you were actually there with another date yeah with a date oh my and- god a date who is very, very, like, not in the media, but his family is very, very, very well known. Like, can you share? Uh, 
So, I mean, he's in the photo. The photos. I was there. Photo in the Dev Wizards, like Alex Hall and Tyler Sandel and, and Mystery Man. I'm like, the Mystery Man is my date, you idiot. Like, what? And yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's almost, I don't want to not disclose it because I care about, it's, he's, he's just, he's so young. And I was like, who can I take with me? That- You're worried. You, Alex Hall, the badass, polarizing, I say it how it is, on selling OC, is cares that you're the guy's younger than you? Okay, he was like, one of my best friends is 50, and it's her daughter's son's age. So I was like, oh my God. But anyways, he ended well, up- Well, hold on. Tell, tell me this. Tell me. I can't let this go. What was the age gap? What, what, uh, uh, 10 years? 12 years? Yeah, like- at the time I was 32 or 30, yeah, three. He was, yeah, 10 years. He but drank I legally. Older. He was 23 and I was 33. Give the shit. Who cares? He's a little baby. You get it, girl. Don't worry okay, so, about it. So the, this, the, the trip, he ended up leaving me in Dubai. Like this whole what? thing. It was, Jason, when I say this was the most insane trip. Wait, what did he, good, bad, and why did he leave you? He left me. So, Honestly, I, I I'll tell you where my head's gonna go. My head's gonna go. He left you because there was something romantic possible with you at time. No, so he here. Here's what happened. He, um, Tyler, when we got to Dubai, was literally like avoiding me like the plague. He wouldn't even like. I would be walking on the boardwalk with him and Mike Roger, the guy I brought, and his brother, and he would literally like put his arm out and be like, "Get like stay away." And I'm like, "You're really hurting my feelings. Like that's so rude." And he's like, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. It's just like, this is crazy. And, you know, I can't believe that this is, you know, what we're facing in the media. I'm like, okay, well, we're not doing anything wrong. Like, I know it's almost the perfect storm. But, and I think I took it a little too lighthearted where I was almost like making a mockery of it. Like I posted a photo and I think Tyler's foot was in my photo. And like, like people like dissected one of his like little tattoos and figured out that it was him. And I was like, why do you care so much? And I probably should have been a little bit more sensitive to that, but I was just like, we aren't doing anything wrong. So, um, my, my date who was there ended up not realizing, I told him, I was like, Oh, Tyler, a guy from my show is going to be here with his brother. And we yeah. get to the airport. We're all chilling in the freaking like Emirates first class lounge. Yeah, which was insane, but that was just that whole. I can't believe I didn't see. Maybe I did, and I just didn't no, really. Maybe, uh, maybe we're on different flights. You, uh, job rule and uh, oh. and Fat Joe were on my flight, the Emirates flight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was not on Fat Joe's flight. Yeah, it was unreal. Well, okay, wow. Um, so got that flight. Honestly, I was like, let's just turn it back. Let's do the flight again. I- it was the best part. Well, other than Beyonce performing, it was the best part of the trip, and that's the best trip I've ever been on in my life. So. To put that forever, and I didn't. Um, the Beyonce concert was a little disappointing, but we don't have to get into that. What? She did uh, it. Uh, right. Dangle. Yeah, but she did you see the the creative behind oh, the of course, yes, yes. and like how just the symbolism of like every single I'm pretty sure that every either dancer or or every single person from her orchestra was either her part of her core group or yeah. they were women from the Middle East. Like everything, the the attention to detail and that piece of art was insane. It was you know insane. what? You're so right. You're actually so, so, so right. Did you though, who was your plus one? You took your brother. So my, bro- so my brother is, he's gay, married, and he's like the biggest, the yeah. biggest Beyonce fan. So he was, has- but she's not a Dubai guy because, like, yeah, like, really, it's like illegal to be gay, and that's why I mentioned it. And and it's yeah. so like he doesn't. He's, he's like anti everything they do uh, yeah. as far as like their politics. But he's like, it's Beyonce, I have to go. And he said, he said, this is him. And he listen, he's in Broadway. Like he he does all the marketing for all the big Broadway shows, so he's in the showbiz. He said, still to this day, the best performance he's ever seen live. Like just everything he. And how about like Jay Z was right above us? Like he was and the you know, royal family. The royal yeah. family was right in front of me. It was nuts. All right, we got to go back though because we got to get clarity of this because I know there are listeners that love watching you and they love okay. to hear all this stuff, personal, professional, financial. We got to get into real estate stuff. before we do though. So yeah. what? Tell finish the story. I got to know what happened. We so were both we show up. We're we're in the we're we're in the first class lounge, and Tyler and his brother also was a little weird timing tyler did like an interview in the front of lax like tmz or somebody was there 
And he, his brother was like, oh, yeah, we just got like TMZ. Blah, blah. I'm like, they didn't come up to me. Like, that's weird. I didn't even see any cameras. Like, I've never been bombarded at the airport. And then the other like in the group chat, someone was like, yeah, he he someone tipped them off that he was going to be there. I'm like, I don't understand. This is just crazy, weird, whatever. So anywho, uh, my date, Roger, he's like, that's who's coming? And I'm like, yeah, Tyler and his brother. And he's like, oh my God, I thought it was the other guy. I'm like, what other guy? He's like the one that's married. And he's like, and I was like, it was so, I, I kept thinking to myself, it's so weird that he's not bringing his wife. And I said, Austin? And he goes, yeah, I thought Austin was the other person from your show coming with his brother. And I'm like, Ooh. okay, well, no, it's Tyler. And he's like, isn't there something like, go, I'm sorry, I say like so much. I'm trying, trying to work on that. Um, He's, he said to me, isn't there some story or headline about you guys? And I said, yeah, but that's not true. And yada, yada, yada. So hindsight, looking back, I'm like, okay, he was already uncomfortable. My date was already uncomfortable just because he knew that there were r rumors. So he ended up leaving me. That's a wild move to be leaving Dubai on that kind of trip. And I just wanted to have a good time. I wanted to be with somebody and let... You know, for me to not take my mom with me on a trip like that, that is a huge sacrifice. My mom is my best friend. It's always a good time. It's, you know, it's very hard for somebody to come above her. Very, very rarely. So I, I was like, oh, my God, like, is this going to be weird? And so we enjoyed the flight. His whole demeanor changed. It kind of ruined the vibe. And I was trying to have him interact with Tyler and his brother and get along. And, and they were, and Tyler was really trying to make my date feel comfortable. And it was just weird. The energy was weird. So my date ended up, we went to there was that rooftop party. There was a rooftop yeah, yeah, party yeah. The first yeah. Night we were there all outside, beautiful cabanas, beautiful, you know, live music and a DJ and all the fun stuff. And, you know, once Tyler and I and his brother and my date get a few drinks on us, it, it, the vibe loosens up. We're all having fun. And I end up falling into, so there's like the jacuzzis. Every, almost every yeah, cabana has a yeah. jacuzzi. And so yeah. the jacuzzi had this, um, this like trough or, or drain. They all had drains. And I'm walking my seven inch stilettos, intoxicated, trying to go find my friends and my foot dumps into one of these drains and I fall and I eat shit and I'm like everything's fine everything's fine all the security I mean could you imagine looking like looking back the hotel was well, like, like oh my who god was, who was at that party like uh one of the Kardashians was there who was it um probably Chloe Chloe no it was the one that I'm so bad with the Kardashians oh, the yeah. one that uh, the tall skinny one yeah she owns the A1A she was there yeah. uh, like in our Walmart Kendall. On, yeah Kendall and on the and the um area where the jacuzzis were the real housewives of dubai were all like dancing on those so i know what you're saying when you fall how does the fall lead to him leaving because i was so i was so my date comes up to me and he's like are you okay i'm like call tyler call tyler where is tyler like tyler at the end of the day was my friend i don't know this guy from joe he's 22 years old i'm like dude you yeah. know so i call tyler i'm like i just ate shit where are you guys come help me i've got security all around me and I think at that point he was just thinking, okay, something set him off. You know when there's alcohol involved, people make really rash yeah. decisions. Yeah. And he says, I'm going back to the room. I'm going to change. Okay. Tyler, me, uh, we met so many people. His brother, uh, the this, uh, what's his name? Renan, the French guy in LA who yeah, makes yeah, the yeah. French videos. And uh, end up hanging out with him and we're just partying. I'm like, where's my date? Go back to my room. He's like, oh, I, I, I meet him at the elevator. He he comes out. He says, okay, um, I, I, I'm glad you came back out here. I'm not really, I don't know if I want to go back out. I said, okay, well, what do you want me to do? I can walk you back to the room, whatever. This is a really long story. We go back to the room and our whole room and our whole floor, once we get out of the elevators, is taped off. There is tape and, and like painter's tape everywhere and he's like what is going on with him so we start both like panicking we already are feeling like we're in this we're in dubai what's yeah, going yeah. on he yeah. wouldn't so he my date gets out his phone to film 
And he's and the guy that there's all these sheiks or shakes in their, you know, in their, you know, very intimidating almost outfits, right? Like you're is intimidating. There's it's basically the royal family. And we're like, listen, we're we're not trying to do anything wrong. That's our room. We're just trying to get in what's going on. He snaps, grabs the phone out of his hand, says, you can't film this, yada, yada, yada. And my get my date gets really, really, really spooked. So my date is his name's Roger Penske. The third, he's part of the Penske family. They are very, very affluent. They're worth, I think, somewhere around eight billion dollars. Um, and his dad, he's li- he's lived a very sheltered life, and so in their minds, they're thinking, "What the fuck is going on?" Sure. He has no security with him on this trip. Okay. Which typically, and- not, right? I assume. You sorry, that sorry. Which I I assume he probably typically does because of his family's like he- worth and power. He typically, A, has his own security. He takes his own plane, you know, and this was, I mean, it was very startling to me and I had no idea what was going on. It was very startling to him. I mean, he probably thought he was going to be like kidnapped sure. or held, held ransom. Who knows? When you're in foreign countries, you just get spooked out, especially when you have a high net worth. And he's the baby, like a, a little 22-year-old kid, a little, you know, scaredy cat, yeah. whatever. So he calls his dad, tells him what's going on. Next thing I know... His dad is booking him a flight. Wow. Out. So he, he takes all of his stuff out of the room. I'm like, are you seriously leaving me? And you're leaving me in Dubai? Yeah. Like, I'm so sorry. I just, I have to go. No explanation. He races out, grabs his passport, and I'm stuck there by myself. So that whole trip, I mean, was absolutely. So I've got my date who left me. Tyler doesn't want to be seen within like yeah. the 20 yeah. foot parameter of me. So I'm just this chick from orange county alone a billion miles away from everybody that i know it's supposed to be the time of my life the best time ever and it ended up just being i regretted not bringing my mom yeah I, it was crazy crazy i'll also defend you here because it was here's where i'm going to defend you big time it was a weird trip in the fact that it was like the best trip ever but i think it was it was the most random group of people of all time I felt the same way about the Bachelor franchise. Like, how of all people in the franchise did they yeah. meet? Right. So they, it was me, Matt, James, Rachel, and then Cassie. It was just a really interesting, like, of of, of, of like, and then when I look around, there's like massive profiles and that. People. Yeah. Oh, like, there was no, and because of that, I noticed at least that there wasn't much like social. There wasn't much networking, which is interesting. Yeah. It was like, people kind of stayed to their click. So yeah. I do see what you're saying when you're like, I, you know, I, especially being in the foreign country. The other thing too is like, they were ridiculous. Like I remember du- um, Beyonce was playing that night and it was like, it was like noon. I was walking around with my brother and I just took a picture of yeah. the state and like yeah. three people sprinted over to me, like open your phone. I'm like, what do you mean open my phone? They're like, delete your phone. Like delete. Yeah. They, that's what they did to us. They yeah. So what? Like, yeah, I see where what you were saying is accurate. I can see also why someone that's a little younger at that power getting a little spooked yeah. out. I think we were all everyone was a little hesitant to get into that, so that all that all kind of checks. The only thing I would that's interesting, like what as I think this connects to the Patron thing, and then we'll get into selling OC. Is at the Patron event, I was like, wait a second. So I had Tyler on the show. I was a fan of Tyler. I like Tyler. I think he was nice on the show. I wanted to hear about his real estate story. And then I had heard, you know, I and I knew I knew of Brittany and I won't share anything like that she said, but it sounded like the the perception was that I had I had interviewed someone who might not, you know, be the nicest guy in the world or might have a front of something that's not the reality. Yeah. Again, I'm like, it's not my job to seek that truth. I'm just doing a business podcast. Here we are talking about all personal stuff. And well, pop culture meets finance, so it comes up. And then, you know, Aren't you and we I trading I- secrets. Yeah, we're trading secrets here. We'll get into the business stuff. We're trading secrets. But then we got to Patron and I met you and my, I told you, I said my natural perception just because of the whole Tyler thing that really think that I was that like you had an affair with Tyler and you're like, shut up. And I'm like, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, that's what I think. And you're like, you really believe that? Like, I, I consider you a smart guy and stuff. You believe that? I was like, I don't watch the show, but that's my perception of it. And then you're saying like, I got to get a statement out there. And then you, you made like not so far after there, you made a statement and it's, I have the statement here. Um, and I don't, we don't need to read the whole thing, but essentially you're saying like, I want to clarify and set the record straight on allegations towards me. I've never been unfaithful in a relationship, nor have I ever been the counterpart to someone who's been unfaithful. 
et cetera, et cetera. And talking about like who you are as a person and like you feel like your character has been attacked. So I was, when I was with you in Dubai and then in Patron, and then you told me that I'm like, Alex, you got to like share that story if that's your truth. Cause I don't know that that's out there and you did. And I'm wondering just like, has that also, you know, does that have like professional ramifications too? Like in the business world of you stepping up and saying that, are you happy? Do you regret that you made that statement? Tell me everything that you're feeling regarding it, per- regarding it personally and professionally. So what's wild about this whole thing is, I mean, I've never had PR, like I've never had anybody represent me. And so I've just kind of been flying blind and in, a, in the weirdest way, it might sound crazy, but just staying in my lane, you know, and I think probably to your point, you touched on, does it, are there any ramifications, um, when it comes to business and it, it hasn't. So for me, I'm thinking, okay, people understand that it's a show and things can get misconstrued or there's a, you know, a perception of reality because it has never affected my, my business until Brittany went on that podcast and said whatever, you know, statement she alluded to. And I had people pull out of deals with me. Um, that I had had lined up, not real estate. Okay. I've never, it's never affected my real estate, but collaborations I had in an 11 with one company. And to be fair, it was, you know, they were saying, we, we still want to work with you. We just don't, we think in, in light of everything that's going on right now, cause it was a public appearance. They were, you know, what they expressed was that they were concerned about me being public. And like, I, I'm like, what do you think I'm going to get egged or something? What's, what's the, the fear? And so they said, we're just going to push it to a, to a later date once things, once the dust settles. But that really, really triggered me. Like that hurt my heart and my, I'm like, okay, I always have said, I will, you know, put myself on this platform and do the reality show thing and I will give it my all, but I have to maintain being brandable and marketable, right? I have to be able to, to do business and provide for my family. So if something is in, you know, infracting on one of those things, then we've got a problem. So I agree. With but someone is, if someone is challenging either behind closed doors and privately or publicly, um, your character, no matter what it is, and it's impacting your business, you have to, you have to protest for yourself if it's warranted, right? You have to. Hundred percent. That was a that was a hard um, kind of reality check for me because. And what I told you and a couple of other people that we were, you know, talking, I was talking to on the Patron trip um, at Stagecoach, I've never been one to feel a need to defend my character, Yeah, you know, and because I keep a very small group, it's my family and my friends who are basically my family and they know who I am and they know my intentions are always pure. You know, I might say some crazy stuff. I might be, you know, a little bit out there, but my intentions are always pure. I'm never trying to hurt anybody and I never ever feel the need to defend my character. And so it's being in this in this spotlight, if you will, and being in a position where, okay, Alex, there does come a time. And, I, and a lot of these lessons I learned as I, I think about how I would um, how I would go about it speaking to my children if they were in a yeah. right? And so giving myself that same advice and that same grace and that same perspective, if you will. And so... I thought to myself, there comes a time where you don't need to feel like you have to defend your 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 character on a daily basis. But if you're threatened, you know, and you're there's a common a, a, a common misconception about you, and it's affecting, it starts to affect your life and your business and your values and who you are as a person. You have to speak up. There comes yeah. a time when you do actually have to speak up for yourself. And um, at that point, uh, that was that was the point. That was the boundary. And speaking to you and, you know, Violetta and stuff, I was just floored at how many people perceived it, perceived it a certain way. Interesting. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And I think, and it's, it's, I think there's good professional and personal advice just in, in what you went through and how you went through it. Um, it's, it's great to hear that you don't have any regrets with that either, but it tell me when I, when I, when I, when we close this chapter, this conversation, the way I, understand it and tell me if I miss anything here. It's important is that Tyler may have been unfaithful. That's something that does not at all connect to you, nor are you of course going to speak to that. But, and Brittany may have made claims that she knew that he was unfaithful, 
but you're not at all involved in any type of unfaithful behavior between you and Tyler when he was married. That's my understanding of the whole situation now. Is that correct? You would be correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. Okay. There we yeah, go. There was never any yeah. infidelity on my part attached yeah. to Tyler or anybody. And and to be honest with you, Brittany could have been, maybe Brittany lives in her own little bubble just like I do. And maybe she wasn't alluding to me. That's just what the audience took. I don't know. And I don't really want to, I hate to make assumptions. It's just that I was at the the short end of the stick on that whole thing. And yeah. And you're just, yeah. you're, you're saying like, listen, some shit might have happened, but it wasn't me and you're clear in your name. And I think, and, and good for you yeah. for doing it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say on that before we transition to selling OC? Are you good with it? I'm great. It's your I'm podcast. Great. I'm just here to. to great work. I just want to make sure I gave you the full stage. Patron, Dubai, both trips. One, we didn't know we were on with each other. But we still have memory of it. And then one, of course, Patron, which was like unbelievable. We all bonded. We had the best fucking time ever. And I think, honestly, from one weekend, we'll have lifelong relationships, which is pretty cool. Now, let's We're get in. invited to a lot of the same stuff. I feel like if we ever now get an email or an invitation where we think it's weird, I'll just be like, hey, Jason, did you also get this invitation? Yeah. Yeah. What, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like, what the hell? It's fascinating. I like it. Maybe our brands okay. connect. Let's find if they do. So, you, obviously, you're in real estate. You've been you're on season three of uh, Selling OC. Uh, this net season three just debuted in May 2024. Yeah. You started with Oppine Group in 2021, but you went on the show in 2022. Talk to me about what that looked like. Like, how did they approach you to be on the show? Did you, were you hitting certain goals or units that they like you'd be a good fit? Was it personality? Tell me about what that process is from being a real estate agent to boom, now they're casting you for the show. So there was no real in between. Um, I was, so I've been selling real estate for over a decade. And I was with Sotheby's prior to um, Jason and Brett um, recruiting me to the Oppenheim Group. And I was in a really, really, really good place in my career. I actually had just been recruited within the company, um, okay. which is not even allowed. At Sotheby's, you can't recruit within unless you have the the blessing, if you will, from the the owner of the company or the, the managing broker partner. And they actually did. We had lost a really great... Uh, agent who was on this team. So they recruited me within the company. And I was really excited because my career was, uh, you know, flourishing. And I was at a great, great, great point. And then, so Jason and Brett re recruited me and Netflix, ne not Netflix, but our production company, Done and Done, calls me up and says, hey, have you ever thought about doing a reality show? I'm like, click you know, click. And they called me like three or four times. I said, listen, I've been approached by other people in Orange County trying to do some like real estate reality show. I'm not interested. My career is in a really good place. I don't have any desire to be in the public eye. So they kept calling a few times. And the last call that they made to me was, before you hang up, have you ever heard of a show called um, Selling Sunset? And I said, yeah, I have, but I don't watch it. I don't really watch television. And they said, okay, have you ever heard of a show called Laguna Beach? And I'm like, well, duh. Like, I have a pulse and a heartbeat and I'm a girl. And they said, okay, well, that those are our shows. And I was thinking to myself, okay, so you're like big time. Like, big yeah. time. And so, you know, my ears perked up and I... I Were you working at the Run Group at this time or no? No. So okay. Jason was probing me to come over and I was thinking to myself... I don't, I'm, I'm so good where I am. My split was at a 90, 10 at Sotheby's, which is like unheard of. Okay. And they what's a mark while you're on that real quick, a trade yeah. secrets, finance money talk. Like what is a typical split at most groups? I mean, I would say 70, 30, uh, you know, um, 80, 20, 80, 20 is really, 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 really good. Okay. Um, with a brand like Sotheby's. Okay. You can go to a Keller Williams or a Coldwell banker and have a higher split, but you don't have that backing of that brand and that label. It's like a Target versus a Saks, right? Okay. So I was with Sotheby's, which is the best. Sorry, Oppenheim Group, but they. Like, I used to say I bleed blue because I was such a diehard Sotheby's girl. And no matter where I went in the world, to tell somebody that I work with Sotheby's, they they know who I. They know my brand. So, anyways, I. Jason was poking me because he wanted to recruit me, but he also wanted me to be on the show. And so I basically, in the beginning, said, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. 
I, I just, I don't think it, the risk is worth the, the, worth the reward and I'm really good. And my mother said to me, you better fucking do it. <laughs> you better fucking do it. And I said, I don't really. I don't know. And she goes, you, you're going to miss an opportunity and you need to do it. So took her advice, did the show three seasons later and, and here we are. So, um, okay. but I was really, really happy re real estate wise before I, before I came to the Oppenheim group. Okay. So you're at 90, 10 split. You go to Oppenheim group. Do they, do they honor that 90, 10 split or no? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. My split with Jason is gross. It's so 60, gross. 40? It, um, Oh God. Now I don't want to misquote because it's the same all across the board. Is yeah. it? It might. No, I think it's 70, 30. Okay. So 70, 30, but you also do get income from the show. So that has to be right. a factor for you as well. Right. Yeah. But I mean, when you take an agent who has, you know, been producing in this field for many, many, many years and yeah. we're just selling multi-million dollar homes and having paychecks that are six figures. That's hard to be when you go onto a reality show and you're making, you know, like minimum wage, it, you know? Yeah. You, so, you said in a podcast, I think your quote was, uh, we're paid a lot less than mo most people would probably imagine. The pay supposedly will increase with the longevity of the show. So you're in three seasons now, 24 total episodes. I'm going to take a stab. You're averaging about five grand an episode. Honestly, Jason, I don't even know. It's, it's <laughs> not. No, I'm not joking you. So I don't, so we get paid. Um, it's not even per, if you break it down, you can, you know, figure out what it is per episode, but we don't get in the contract. It doesn't say, oh, you get paid X amount per episode. It says, a we get, it's a, once we agree to do a season, um, it's, we get paid every two weeks. It just gets deposited into our bank and it's, uh, you know, a, a nominal amount and, it's it's broken up. So I'm assuming that the way that Netflix and production and all of the moving parts are involved, they say, hey, Netflix has agreed to give us eight episodes and we're going to give you X amount per episode, but we're going to break it down between, you know, six months of filming or three months of filming and you get paid every two weeks. So there's not like a lump sum. Um, and it's it's just it's jolting when you're devoting so much time to something and being told what to do and being kind of bossed around and, hey, be here at this time and do this and wear this and, you know, talk about this. Where, like, I had a career. I was my own boss. I am my own boss. Nobody really tells me what to do. And I have freedom, time freedom and financial freedom. It's just a totally polar opposite career, if you will, for a lot less pay. But it eventually... I, I believe I would have continued to do it if I didn't believe that it will pay off. The juice will be worth the squeeze. You know, obviously yeah. I want to use my platform for a lot of other things. I will always sell real estate. I, I don't think I will ever stop doing that because I love it so much. Um, but obviously with this platform now doing a lot of other things and taking advantage of the the moment. Okay. Let me ask you this then. So yeah, this what there's, I promise there's a reason for this question. So I want to compare kind of the, the value add, but if you've done 24 episodes, three seasons, and if it is 5k an episode, that's around like 120k in total. Is that sub? would you say that's probably somewhat, let's just say even like warm or am I way off? You're saying 120 for all three seasons? For all three seasons. Is there somewhat close? Like cold, way off, not even close. Like if you had to approximate. I think less, I think less. Sure. Well, let's say it's, if I, if for this example, if I use 90 grand, do you think that's getting warmer? Probably. Okay. Probably. Yeah. I would have to go back and look, I'm not, yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful. Okay. I'm thankful. I don't have to, you know, if I want to swipe my card or take out some money, I don't, yeah. I, I've got, money not to it. I'm not dissecting it. I just know that it's very like my attorney and he's like, listen, I know this is crazy low, but we can renegotiate after you know, X amount of seasons and we can get yeah. you more. But even that, you know, they've got a system in place and you you get paid what they offer. And if you don't want to do it, you're, you're up. Replaceable. You're, you're up. Yeah, like, yeah. Not... So that's why I always laugh. I'm like, why do we even need an attorney? Some of the people, some of our my friends that are on the show don't even have attorneys because they're like, what's the point in paying somebody a commission for something that, a contract that's basically non-negotiable? 
Yeah, yeah. You can, if you try to like move too much on that contract, they'll just find the next person. But let me ask you. So let's just assume. Let's assume twenty five based on like kind of the like you're saying. Like I'm not really sure, but it's immaterial. But let's just assume. Let's say seventy five k. Okay, it's a round for the sake. Seventy five k. Three seasons. You've deployed a lot of time, a lot of energy. Obviously, a lot of cost. Right. You got to think about outfits you're wearing and stuff like that. And certainly, time. Has the value, when you look at the business economics, do you think the value of being on the show has been significantly greater or less than when you think of, you know, what the opportunity cost of time and capital is based on what you're earning from the show? So this is the conversation I have with myself, like on a weekly basis. (laughs) Is it worth it? And what I will tell you is for me, it has been worth it, right? The opportunities that have presented themselves because of the show. Uh, I'm an experience girl, right? I am all about an experience. I don't care so much about, you know, obviously I like nice things. I like nice cars, handbags, but those aren't my my priorities. You give me an experience. You give me stagecoach with Patron, Dubai with the royal family and Beyonce. Those are things that never would have crossed my path or come across my table without the platform uh, with an out Netflix, without the Oppenheim group and without the reality show. So those are life-changing opportunities for me. And for me, okay, let's say I make half a million bucks selling real estate, you know, in six months or, or whatever it might be. That's just me living my normal life, which is also fantastic. And I love, don't get me wrong. I'm a mom, I'm raising my kids, but this is, such a unique opportunity that I'm so, so, so grateful for. And I want to take complete advantage of it. So it's not so much the financial. If it was just the financial, I would say absolutely it's not worth it. No No, way. Financials would ever make sense. But I think what I agree with too is I think when you go on shows like this or The Batch or whatever it is, whenever you're getting this opportunity, it creates accessibility. So the accessibility of the, the people that will pick up your phone call or the meetings you can set or the places you can go with the people that you'll meet, I think like that's invaluable. So when you think about mom, I think, it's yeah, the network the network. And you really about mom's advice, like going back to that, this is like the full, let's put the bow on it. Mom telling you to do it. You being reluctant to was mom, right? Mom's always right. <laughs> mom's all, whether they're right or not, they're always right. Okay. I got okay. last question. I'm not one saying question. that because she's sitting on my sofa over here. Either. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah. One more. No, I agree with you. Moms are always right. But the last thing I got on selling ADLC is, do you feel that you already mentioned it? There are so many uh, real estate agents out there in the luxury space that would die to be on this show. They would be scratching and clawing to take you out and take your spot. Do you at all feel pressure because of the supply demand game of this show that you got to bring it when filming? You got to create drama. You got to be polarizing. Do you feel that in any capacity? I don't. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, there are moments in filming where I'm like, I'm a businesswoman. Okay. So there are moments within filming where somebody will come up to me and try to start something. And my natural response is to just not say anything. I don't typically, I'm a lone wolf in business. I keep my pack really small in my private life. So this experience and having to be with agents and having to be in a drama filled office is so outside of my norm. So Typically, I would just remove myself from a situation if I did have these real life in real life, if I was having these experiences with agents or people prying into my personal life or trying to attach themselves to me just for screen time, I wouldn't be a part of that. Right. So there are moments in filming when I think, okay, Alex, in this moment, you would normally just be quiet and not even give it life, but we are creating a reality show. So let your freak flag fly and say whatever the fuck it is you want to say, right? And taking advantage of it and not being so heavy on it. You know, I'm, it is what it is. It's a reality show and I want people to be entertained and, and that's, and that's it, you know? And so take thinking about it like that and it's my job. And when I leave, I try to make it be so that when I leave the show and filming, then I have my real life. Like that's my work. And it's sometimes it's hard to disassociate, but it, it I try. And there are also moments where in, you know, in filming when, you know, we, we want longevity, we want to have, um, 
we want to have the good ratings. And there's situations where we're exhausted, right? We've been filming back to back, maybe three scenes and different locations, a different outfit, different hair, different makeup, different topics. You, you get, you, it's, you literally get dis, you get disoriented. And yeah. there have been times where we're filming and they're like, okay, well, let's try it over here. Or, um, the, the lighting wasn't right. And I just say, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just what give, give. you're looking for, because they never want to, like, it's not scripted and it's not Never is, yeah. It's not, it's not scripted, but they only really know. Vision. Well, they, they they try to get you. I I view it as they have an idea of what they want it to look like. Sure. And it, if you're not doing it that way, they'll make you redo the scene until you kind of give them some form of what it is that they want. And so that's why I'm like, what, what's the narrative here? What are we going for? Just tell me what you yeah. want. And I'll tell you if I'm okay with doing yeah. that. Or if that's how I really feel or that's how I think. Because sometimes our, we're brain dead by the end of the yeah. day. Exactly. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. I actually remember being on The Master too, when we're doing pickups, right? So you're like picking up the interview so it makes sense to what's going to happen. Yeah. There were times you'd be in that chair for a few hours and you just, be, you know, they're just, everyone's doing their job. And I would say same thing. Just like, all right, is a lot, just tell me like, you know, what, what we need to do here so we could be done. And if I disagree with it, I'm not going to say it. But 100%. let's let it yeah, I'm not so, like a puppet to that extent, but exactly. I'm like, what do you want me to say? And if it's somewhat aligned with how I am feeling or what I yeah. think, then I'll say it. <laughs> and, you'll say it in, and you'll say it in your own words with your own delivery. Right. And honestly, I think what that does is that makes you easy to work with. And in this industry, if you're not easy to work with, catch yourself goodbye. You'll never get a call back. But let's get in. We got a few minutes here left. Got to talk about real estate. Meat potatoes here. Um, so you're in luxury brokerage right now. Existing home sales fell 4.3% from February to March, and we're down 3.7% from March 2023 to 2024. Obviously, interest rates, uh, economic supply and demand of, of what's available has a huge impact. Obviously, a lot of migration from states like California to um, states like actually Tennessee and states like Texas. So there's a whole lot of happening in your industry right now. I wanted just your overall take on what you see with the market, where it's going and what's happening for, you know, my listeners who are just like, I don't know what's going on in the real estate market. Do I buy now? Do I wait? What do I do? What's your take? Well, I think taking all of that into consideration, obviously there is a huge supply and demand issue that we've been, you know, battling for the last however many years, right? This is not something that's new. So that's something that I've tried to adapt to. However, Interest rates, that's also a problem now. And we're also having to take into consideration that we have an election coming up. So a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts. And I, what I'm finding now is that buyers, the question I get is, should I wait until after the election? What's going to happen? What What's the crystal ball thing? And the truth of the matter is, is that I don't think it's going to get, there's not going to be some crazy, you know, spike or drop after the election. Um, and I think that with a lot of people moving out of California right now with, you know, rightfully, rightfully so, the biggest problem I see with people moving out, and I've had many clients that do that, it's hard to leave California in particular, and it's very, very easy to get out, and it's very, very, very difficult to get back into California um, unless you're at a certain caliber of, of wealth. But even when you are, once you get used to a different state and you get used to different tax taxes and you know what you're paying out whether it's property tax or it's income tax um it's difficult to to then come back come back here whether it's mental or financial or physical and so i think everybody right now is they want you know as agents we're trying to guide and lead our clients and point them in the right direction and all we can really do is give them the facts of what we know obviously yeah. i'm you know the market is cyclical every 7 to 10 years we see it pivot right and Right now, it's it's difficult to tell because there are just so many contributing factors. It is an election year. And so I'm if my clients are already reluctant and thinking, hey, if I buy now, it will it be a mistake. And is something crazy going to happen? Am I going to regret it after the election? I don't think so. I don't yeah. think anything drastic is going to happen after the election. I think the more important thing is, you know, advising them. Do you want do you see yourself in California? Is that yeah. No, that's the only thing I think with the election is going to make a difference on um, the the interest rates. I try to remind people to, you know, we can't have high interest rate and high home prices, um, which is something that we've had for a while now. And that's why the market has become stagnant. You know, 
and we are in a bubble where I live here in Orange County. We are in a, a, a bubble because it's such an affluent area. We've got a lot of cash buyers. And so to a certain degree, we are a little bit unaffected by that. Um, but that's not everybody. That's not the entire, you know, the entire state or the entire county that we're in. And so I just think we got to ride the wave. We've got to ride the wave. If you're ever moving forward in fear, it's, it's, it's not going to serve you. And so I just try to give my clients the facts of where we're at right now. I know interest rates are high. I know home prices are also high. But guess who else knows this information? The homeowners and the agents. So negotiating is, I would say, probably my strongest point. <laughs> um, and if somebody wants a certain house and they think, hey, this is what I'm paying in my interest rate, and this is what the price is, let's go in and negotiate and see what we can make happen. Yeah, it's interesting. It's such a weird, weird space because like you said, there's so many moving contributing factors. You have boomers that won't leave their properties because of the value and how do they replace their current home with what they sell it for. You have mortgage applications down like over 10%, but then refinances are up like 20% in the last year. And I've, I read something the other day that there's never been more homes that are mortgage free in the entire country than right now. So of course, people are sitting given like this this weird space. And even in Nashville, you know, there are homes that are most homes are like sitting on the market for like a hundred plus days. And I think that's a contributing factor to people still living in the like 2021, 2022 prices. So like things are still a little too elevated given the interest rates, like you said. But wild, wild space to be in right now. And there's so many moving parts. Let's do like a little rapid fire on real estate, just kind of like your overall take and a quick, syno quick synopsis because we have to uh, wrap here soon. So let's just say quick take from Alex Hall on let's say this this new luxury tax. I think they call it the mansion tax in California. Quick take. Uh, well, first of all, it's not only it's not California. It's Los Angeles, and we don't have it here in Orange County. Okay. okay. Another reason why Orange County is superior to Los Angeles County and. I don't, that's all I have to say about that. We don't have that. I like it. So Doesn't it impact you. Okay. National Association of Realtors, the recent legal settlement. Let's get your take on that. It doesn't even phase me. It's it basically, it's just a, a rewording type of a situation. Buyers that have actual value in this industry will still get paid. A listing agent who realizes and is successful and knows that a buyer's agent also holds value and brings value will still continue to pay. And nothing changes. It doesn't change anything. All it's going to do is weed out the weak agents, which I think it's we're 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 due we're due for that. So for when it comes to commission, you're not negotiating down. This is your rate. You're staying to it. Take it or leave it. Oh no! I mean, I'll never lose a deal over commission. Like I will negotiate wh wherever right. I need to. But as far as them saying we can't advertise that there's a buyer's agent commission in the MLS. Um, that doesn't, people are all up in arms about it and it really doesn't change. You know, we've always been able to either offer a buyer, a, a buyer's agent commission or not. Nothing yeah. has, that, that hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed in the industry is the, our ability to market that in the MLS. That's it. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Let's do a little rapid fire here. Let, biggest deal you've ever done. How much? Oh God. Um, oh, well, I've got a $68 million listing in Corona Del Mar right now. Oh my God. 68 million. What's your percentage on that? We've got, so we've got a four and a half percent listing agreement signed for three years and 2% goes to the buyer's agent and two and a half will go to the selling agent, which is, which would be me. And if we double end it, we've agreed to 4% total commission, okay. which is phenomenal. Let's go. That I'm sure will be the largest commission check that you've gotten, but that deal hasn't closed yet. Oh. For this day on, what's the largest commission check you got? Oh, the the amount of my check? Yeah, but financial hey, transparent. We, we tra no, 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 no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. My whole second book is called Talk Money to Me. Oh, and the yeah. idea is through financial transparency, we can learn, we can educate. We could you someone could be listening to this right now. And by sharing numbers, you might be able to literally change their entire life because they can now pursue something that they never even thought they could or something like that. Give me a roundabout. So you can okay. even give me I will six tell figures, you. six figures. I will. Okay. So here's the deal. There's a, there's a check that's written to the brokerage for a certain amount and then dil diluted and it's, and then my check, right? Which is a very yeah. sad math equation. Oh, 
will. Um, but I will say the largest check that's been written to my name was six figures and had a three in front of it. Okay, let's go. You're giving, you're making us do our work, but we'll do our work. <laughs> hey, boy, Ryan Sirhead's been on. Uh, we've had Tracy Tudor. We've had Josh Flagg, a bunch of them. Don't worry. They're ripping off numbers left and right. You're not. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Tracy. Like it's tacky in a way. I don't know. It's, 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 you know what? This is the entire purpose of the podcast. We try and break that stigma because we were taught that it's tacky. It's just how it's delivered. It's the yeah. form of, is it toxic or is it healthy? Is it yeah. a way that we're communicating to like, and in relationships, that's what my book's about. It's about like, we, in love and money, we are so living in a gray area where we have no clarity on how we spend and what it means and what, it, like how to navigate it that we just assume and the assumptions create resentment and all these other issues. So yeah, I think true. it communicated the people that are bragging, oh, I made this, fuck off. Like that's doing <laughs> nothing for us. But when well, we use it in like an educational standpoint, yeah, like, yeah, we're right. You know. You're right. I will say that I've had a million, over a million dollar check written to my brokerage. It was a co-listing and I made the check that was written to my brokerage from my listing was over a million dollars. That's incredible. And so let's just say, let's do a little learning lesson here. Someone listens to that and they say they're going to go full speed in the luxury brokerage business. I'm going to do it. I can be Alex Hall. I can have a million dollar check someday written to my brokerage. How many years do you think it will take for them to get to that point? Oh God, it, Within within 24 months, you can be doing that. Wow. That's he, amazing. He, I love I that. Say, I will say the top three most important things in this industry is your confidence. Okay. You have to, and, and knowledge gives you power, gives you confidence, right? You have to be the most knowledgeable person in the room. Um, I will say that your network, your relationships is so fucking important. Like if you ha don't have relationships in this industry, you have nothing. And if you don't have your um, if you, if you can't lean back, if you don't build yourself the right way, you won't make it in this industry. If you're doing things, if you're shortcutting, if you're building, if you're, if you're burning bridges, if you're not respecting other agents, if you're not doing it right, you will not have longevity in this career. You have to maintain healthy relationships throughout and respect the other people who are involved in this industry. Um, and the third, the third thing I think, which is something that was huge for me is thank you till you make it. Right. I walked into any room with the most confidence because I knew I was the most knowledgeable and I had the confidence. Therefore, the the person I was speaking to trying to earn their business had confidence in me. And my career skyrocketed based off of my 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 I don't like to say fake it till you make it anymore. I like to say believe it until you become it because Ooh. it's such a an empowering mindset to have. I love that line. That's one we're going to take. Okay, two more for you, and then we'll get your yeah. trading secret and wrap up here. Um, one agent that you are the most impressed by, it cannot be yourself. It cannot be Jason Oppenheim or Brett Oppenheim. It's got to be someone else that you're just like that. But coming from the show? So it could be anyone. It could just be who is the person that you think is the best agent you know out there and why? Oh, out there. Just like the, that you've come across that like you've, you you're you're inspired by that. You're like, damn, they could even be on the show. You're just like, I respect and admire what they've done. Okay. So I have to say always is going to be the, my, my broker who mentored me when, you know, 12 years ago, 11 or 12 years ago. Um, I was at this very small, you know, Orange County brokerage and he basically taught me everything I know. And he actually told me when I was at this brokerage, he said, he, he, he called me into his office one day and he said, Alex, what are you doing here? And I said, what do you mean? I'm so happy. I love it here. Like, are you kidding me? Every day I learn something new from you. And he was very direct, very straightforward, very, very, very good at mentoring. And he said, y it's time for you to go. It's time for you to spread your wings. You need to be in like a Newport area. You, you, you've outgrown this box. Oh. And I said, really? And he goes, yes. Like you need to, he's, I, he's like within the next month, I want, I, I want you out of here. And I, I was like, I'm so offended. But after, you know, thinking about it, it was the best advice he ever could have given me. And that's when I, I then went to Sotheby's. That's amazing. I think yeah. it's, you're surrounded by good people. Mom and a mentor like that. Last question I got for you before we get your trading secret would be the biggest, like, do you have, you know, when you're working in a luxury market like this, 
I'm sure you've come across some pretty powerful people as we've talked about, but do you have like a, a fun celebrity story? Like you, you sold a house for some type of celebrity or you're about to maybe do a deal with a celebrity or maybe like your boy crush growing up, the poster was on your wall and now you're working on something with them. Anything like that, given the space that you operate in? God, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, cap- so uh, I, this is a this is two parts. A, I think that it has completely come full circle with me just being on this show with a production company that produced Laguna Beach because I grew up in a very small town in Central California, a little farm town. And when I tell you, me and my girlfriends in high school used to have like every Tuesday night or whatever night it was that this show Laguna Beach came on, we would get our popcorn, we would get in our pajamas, and we would all watch Laguna Beach. Like this was, we aspired to just be, you know these girls. And so this has come full circle for me. The fact that I'm on a show that did the Hills and did Laguna Beach, it's it's wild to me. But I will say as far as real estate goes, um, I don't know if it's such, I mean, I think the first thing that comes to mind, it's not a celebrity. It's not a, any of those types of encounters, but I was working for a, a person who was very, very, you know, affluent, very successful and wanted me to list, list, their house. So I go over, it's this huge property right on the shore of uh, in Laguna Beach, right by this beach where I grew up. And I'm like, okay, this is stunning. I've already done the comps. I already know, you know, I knew everything. And I walk in to this home and there are photos all over the walls. Like I- I'm talking massive prints with matted frames and probably thousands of dollars worth of photography throughout this house. And it's all nude photos of this man <laughs> on the beach with a hard on. <laughs> oh, what? And I was so taken aback. I literally walked in and I was like, got my pepper spray on my, my keychain, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, what? The it heck? wasn't the owner, though, right? He had pictures of himself naked. This, like, modest-looking, kind of older, like, maybe in his 50s, gentleman, on oh, the beach. Some of the photos had women in them with him, but it was, like, the most stoic photos on this beach that I grew up on. I'm like, is that the background of my beach? Oh, and ended up, like, all these rocks in the background, and it's him standing there, like, with, like, full freaking er- erection. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, like, this is... Probably like somewhere would be like a 13 and a $16 million listing. And that's what I'm thinking in my head. And the only thing I kept thinking was, if I take this listing, this guy has to take these photos down. Like I cannot sell this home with these photos in here. And sure as shit, he ended up saying like, yeah, he he ended up during the listing presentation. He said, don't worry, like I'm going to take the photos down. And I'm thinking to myself, couldn't you have taken them down before I got here? Like I'm scarred. I'm going to have to burn my eyeballs now. But that that was... You, what do you think his, in, like, was was he trying to pick you up or something? No, like, what? but I know what industry he was in because then I, I, I researched uh, the title at LLC. He's a porn he's a porn director. Oh, got it. So you what? So, so you sold like a uh, cuckoo weird, I don't know. Just, all right, so you sold a $16 million property for a porn director. That's a classic. That's incredible. And a I'm, lot of the homes actually, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't. It's not a hobby of mine to watch porn, but I have, I do know of homes that people have and they're like, hey, we sometimes allow production companies in here to, to film content. I'm like, what kind of content? I don't want to know. Oh, oh so, my. like this world of the higher, one of the most fun things for me in this industry is finding out what these people do for careers, like at this level, you know, when they own, you know, 40, 50, $60 million homes and properties, I'm always asking the question, what is it that you do? I want to know the stories. I want to know the backgrounds. And it's always different. It's We're the melting pot here in, in California. I just love it. Interesting. One day you're going to be able to write a great book about all these experiences, the clients. That you're well, I've signed, a, I've signed a lot of NDAs too. So I don't know how much I could do. Well, the yeah. ones that you haven't signed, there's going to be some good storytelling there. Uh, but Alex, it's been great. Thank you for diving into the financial aspect of your business. I love the vulnerability and the openness of the fact that in 24 months, Someone could get up and running if they put in the right aptitude. I think there's so many people that come on the show and individuals that listen, look up to those people. 
and they try and create this mirage like it's impossible to do what they've yeah. done. And I love that you broke that wall down and then also giving us a little insight on the real estate market. So it was cool to have you on. Could have talked for another hour. Next time I have you on, we're going to have to talk about love and money. I know you have had some uh, hardships and you're a single mother with kids. And of course, I'm sure you have a take on that. But for now, we'll just get your trading secret. And the first episode you've ever done here, what is one trading secret you could leave us with? So the idea behind this is, you know, someone or a student couldn't learn it from a professor. They couldn't go to a TikTok tutorial or YouTube. They could only learn it from you, given your experiences in your career, financial and personal life. So one trading secret from Alex Hall, what could it be? Oh, gosh. You know, I think, oh, that's tough. There's there's a there's a lot. Um, I think probably the most important thing to to know when you're going into a business is you know, I think people say like, oh, you can do anything you put your mind to and you can, but I think focusing on the things that you're already good at and things that you really naturally enjoy doing is where you're going to have the most success naturally. So trusting yourself, trusting your instincts, trusting your intuition and trusting what you're naturally adapted at doing and what you enjoy. Anything that you naturally enjoy doing, you can build an empire from. I don't care if you're like, hey, I love sweeping my floor. You can build something, you know, beautiful and fantastic and lucrative around that. You just have to think really, really, really big. But I would never, my advice would be don't force yourself into a career or um, something that you think somebody else has done and been successful at. Find your own niche and what you're passionate about and follow that and work your ass off. Love that trading secret. One of the reasons I love it so much is because whenever I do like branding or if someone tells me they're lost in their career, I literally tell them, have your notepad section out and anytime for the next week, you naturally gravitate towards anything. I don't care if it's a show you're watching, it's a type of makeup, it's a shoe you're just scrolling on. Yep. Write down the brand, write down what you're naturally gravitated to because behind those are multi-billion dollar companies and behind those are industry in which you can make a splash. Perfectly said, love that trading secret. Alex, if people want more of you, they want Alex Hall, where can they find everything you got going on? Uh, I'm really only on, I'm on, I'm on Instagram, a little bit on TikTok. Instagram is Alex Hall OC. And obviously Netflix, where I bear some really, some of them unbearable moments and some of them beautiful moments. So there it is. I love it. <laughs> Check out Netflix, the Cellular OC, and of course your Instagram and everywhere you can find you on social media. Thank you for being on this episode, Trig. Thank you so much for having me. So much fun, Jason.